All right, here we go. So objective three, again, four-step process for a two-sided test are most students non-smokers. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website, 59% of high school students have never smoked a cigarette. Anton wonders if this national result holds true in his large urban high school. For a statistics class project, Anton surveys an SRS of 150 students from his school, and 102 say they have never smoked a cigarette. Is there convincing evidence at the alpha equals 0.05 significance level that the proportion of all students at Anton's high school differ from the national result? So again, I have to state what I'm doing first. It's a good way to kind of break down the problem and see if you know what's going on. So we want to perform a test at the alpha equals, and here's our significance level, 0 0.05. Again, assume it's that unless they tell you. At the alpha equals 0 0.05 significance level of, and now we stay our two hypotheses. So uh, for the null, P equals, and it looks like this is our null value, so 0.59. And now for our alternative value, or our alternative hypothesis, you still use 0.59, but what symbol do you use? Less than, greater than, or a not equal to? Well, when you see the words holds true, that is where you are going to insert the not equal to, right? We're not saying we think it's more, we not think it's less, we just think it doesn't hold true. We think it's different than that number, okay? All right, and then again, where P equals, and now we're looking for, uh, what we're measuring. So right here, after the null is high school students who have never smoked a cigarette. But again, we're looking at students from his school. So where P equals the true proportion of all, so the true proportion of all students from Anton's school who have never smoked a cigarette who have never smoked a cigarette. And there we go, there's the state part. Okay, next, the plan part. Again, I gotta erase this so I have room. Okay, so we're gonna plan how to do this. So when we're doing a test for a proportion, it's always a one sample Z test for P. Random condition. Okay, so SRS of 150 students from his school. SRS of 150 students from his school. That from his school is important because that's why we include from Anton's school in the uh, in the uh, explanation of our uh, of our parameter, okay? We're looking at the, the kids from his school. So that's met uh, large counts time. So over here, N equals, we write it down 150. Your P null value equals, we have it up here as 0.59. So do N times P, 150 times 0.59. When I do 150 times 0.59, I get... 88.5, which is greater than or equal to 10. Do 150 times 1 minus 0 0.59. 180 times, uh, I'm sorry, 150 times 1 minus 0 0.59, and I get 61.5. And those are both greater than or equal to 10, so we are good to go. Okay. So now that we've planned it out, now we're actually going to do the calculation. So here we go. All right, so when we do, first thing I want to do, all right, is I want to, uh, again, restate my sample size value of 150, restate my null value of 0.59, and now I want to find my p hat value. In the sample of 150, 102 say they'd never smoked. So 102 divided by 150 is 0.68. So a little bit higher, so again, potentially maybe there's, you know, this, this, uh, Percentage is not true for Anton's school, but let's find out. Let's find the Z standardized test statistic. Let's take our value, 0.68, subtract our null value of 0.59, and divide by 0.59 times 1 minus 0.59, divided by 150, and all that denominator is inside the square root. 
And then we're going to finish the rest of this problem away on the stats applet. Okay, so let's get there. Uh, oh, first we got to find our test statistic in the calculator. Fraction bar, 0.68 minus 0.59. We know it's going to be positive. A uh, square root of a fraction, 0.59 times 1 minus 0.59 all over your sample size of 150. And I get a Z value of three decimals, two, four, one. The one doesn't change the one, so it just stops there. Z equals 2.241. So now I need to find my P value. Now for the P value, we're gonna use the plus and minus this because it's a two-sided test. We can't forget that. So because it's a two-sided test, we're going outside of 2.241 and negative 2.241. So when I come here, stats applet, calculate area, 0, 1, outside of a region, uh, 2.241. Let me double check that. Uh, 2.241 and then negative 2.241. When I calculate that, there you go, 0 0.025. So our p-value is equal to 0 0.025. And again, you want to copy and paste this into the question as well. Okay. So now we conclude. Conclude. Okay. So we're going to say our p-value of 0 0.025 is less than 0 0.05. So we reject the null. This means the null, not not. Uh, I just want a period. Okay, it's not let me erase. So that's a period. The null. There is convincing evidence. There is convincing evidence that the, and now again, copy and paste from the state that the true proportion of all students at Anton School who have never smoked a cigarette and then again we're going to include the alternative the alternative was not equal to 0.59 so you can say it is not equal to 0.59 but I like the phrase differs from, differs from 0 0.59. And that's your conclusion. And again, the conclusion is what we really care about. So Anton did find convincing evidence that his school differs from the 0 0.59. And again, I'm trying to think in my head of why I would do a two-sided versus a one-sided. I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe two-sided, you, you don't know. You just think, hey, we could be, we could have more smokers in our school. We could have less smokers in our school. I'm not sure. I just don't think it's 0.59. And that's what he found. He found convincing evidence that it's not. All right. Now, we'll actually do later, we're going to talk about confidence intervals versus significance tests. Because with a confidence interval, it would tell you where we think the true proportion is. And that would give us a, an idea of what, whether it was below 0.59 or above 0.59. So there you go. All right. Cool. All right, so that is section uh, 8.4. Uh, best of luck, and we'll see you next time.